What's up everyone and welcome to another Rust electrical tutorial. I'm Niceish and today we are talking about elevators. Now this is part one of a, of a two part series and so we're just going to be covering the basics of getting it installed, how to use it and how to secure it against unauthorized players. Uh, I've got a power bank set up over here with a wind turbine and three solar. If you're uh, wondering why I did that or how to do that, see the provided link. The output of this power bank is running to the input of this uh, branch switch over here. This branch switch represents represents the uh, power management, beginning of power management in your base or my base. Uh, so if you want more information on that, see that link. And then finally, I'm going to be using AND and OR switches. So if you'd like to know more about those, see the provided link on those. All right, so to get started, we're going to start with crafting. You need a uh, level two workbench to do this. And for each uh, elevator is going to cost three high qual, 200 metal frags and one gear. You have to build an elevator for every floor that you want your elevator your elevator shaft to travel. So in this case, we've got three levels here, three stories. I'm going to have to build three elevators at that cost per elevator. Now, the elevator itself requires a square foundation. Uh, you can rotate it with R, depending on how you want to place it. The elevators have a maximum build height of six stories, six elevators. Anything higher than that, you have to break off or go above it on a new story. Uh, when they have a health of 600, so they're they're the same as a uh, garage door. When you break an elevator that's in the top position going down, it's going to replace the space below it with another elevator and keep doing that. So this is actually a good way to secure your base. If you have, say, a bunker shaft or something, it's going to cost a raider 600 per floor to get through all those elevators. It's just something to keep in mind. Now, Let's go ahead and get started with actually building this. I'm gonna place an elevator on our first floor here. Uh, real quick, I wanna note if you, I'm gonna just do this really quick uh, just to show you something. If you hook up power to the elevator before you're done building it, when you hit the next floor, it's going to delete the wiring. So you need to wait until you've fully installed the elevator to its highest position before you run the wire to that input on the left motor there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to first do this in the most basic way and just show you how to use it. And then we'll show you how to secure it using these other switches. So right now we're gonna skip all this up here and just go straight to this. So I'm gonna run a line out of this branch and I'm going to run that in here that you can do this however you like. I just like to run things neatly. And I'm gonna place that up in here somewhere on the ceiling. You can clip through the elevator over in the direction of the motor somewhere and then drop it down to the power. That's how I do it. Uh, once you've done that, it requires five volts. I'm gonna set this to five. Uh, it doesn't matter how many stories you do, it's always five volts regardless of the elevator um, height. Uh, so there you go. And now once you've provided five volts, the lights in the elevator will turn on. Once those are illuminated, you know you've, you've done the correct voltage. So uh, the absolute easiest way to do this is to use a button. Each floor, when you build an elevator, will, will auto-generate a call elevator input here. You, that can be, you can think of that as just a general input. You just need one volt to that input and it will call the elevator to that position. Um, so if I were to do so from here, it's gonna call the elevator down like you would expect. Uh, if I go up here, set up the exact same thing, the elevator is going to call predictably to back to the top floor, wherever it is you're calling from. Uh, the In addition to the buttons on the, that you can attach to these call elevator inputs. Um, it also has a, I guess you call it a master control box on the inside. It has a raised elevator. If you press that once, it'll take you one floor up. Lower elevator pressed once will take you one floor down. If you hold either one, it gives you the option of, in this case, raise elevator to top. That's gonna take the elevator to its top most position available. And the same thing with lower, it'll take you to the lowest position available. And that's it. That's the basics. At this point, you could throw doors on this and use it. Uh, but there's one thing that's important to note is that I'm going to deauthorize myself here from this TC. The elevator does not care about TC authorization. So even though I'm not authorized, so I you could consider me a raider, I can use this elevator uh, as if I'm off in the base because it doesn't care. So I can use it with outside buttons. I can use whatever I want. So. That is something, you know, you would, the best you could do here is I guess you could put a bunker in front of it, but uh, really putting doors on it is the most common thing. And so that's not very secure. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to put a power lock, I guess you could call it on it, where we're going to only allow the elevator to be powered when an authorized player is here. So let's go ahead and just, I'm gonna unhook this. Uh, oops, I have to authorize on here. I'm gonna unhook this to start and I'm going to place two HVHF sensors 
in here, one on each floor that you intend to use. So I'm gonna place one here. I like to go as high as I can. Note if there's a garage door here and the roll is on the inside, it'll, it won't be able to see you if you're really close to it. You'll have to back up. So you might consider putting the rolls on the outside of your elevator. I'm gonna go up to the top here, do the same thing. Uh, I'm going to place this somewhere where it'll be on the top. Like that's good. And so and you and you need to do this on every floor that you want this to stop. So this is something, you know, I know some people are going to say, well, you could just put a smart a smart switch that you can turn on and off the power of the elevator with Rust Plus. That is true. If you're playing on hardcore mode, you won't be able to do that. Rust Plus doesn't work in hardcore. Um, and so you could use just a manual switch that you turn off in your in say your TC room or something that cuts off power of the elevator when you leave. Um, this is the, what I'm going to show you is something that's automated and it's something you don't have to touch. So if you want something that's simple, just as a switch, all you would do is take a switch or a smart switch. You would place it in line. You'd run your power to the switch. The output would go to the power on the elevator and you would set this to six to account for the, the, the one volt that the, the switch needs. And then at that point you can just turn on and off power to your elevator. That is definitely something you can do. In this way, we're gonna make it automated so you don't have to do that. So what we're gonna do is we've placed our two our two HBHF sensors on the two floors we're gonna build. We're gonna skip the middle floor. Um, and I'm just gonna run from this first one again. This was the one that was five. I'm gonna go ahead and run this to this first branch. Each floor requires the, a pair of these. It requires a branch, an AND switch, and an HBHF sensor. That's the package per floor, those three items. The OR switches are just are only gonna be used to bring things together and I'll show you how that works. So the power out of this is gonna run to the, the one of the inputs on the AND switch that you're using in that package. Doesn't matter which input you choose. Um, and then the, the, uh, the branch out is gonna run to the HBHF sensor. Now I'm gonna do this as neatly as I can. Try and keep this, um, easy to understand. I'm going to run this to the power in of my HBHF sensor. You want to make sure you tap this around until it gets back to exclude authorize so that it says exclude authorize, include others, or just simply hold it and choose the two. You need to make sure that it's exclude authorized, include others, because you want it to trigger when it sees an authorized player. So you want to send a volt when it sees someone authorized and you want to ignore players who do not have TC access. So the output of that, you're just going to run that back uh, over. I'll just put this back down close to this line here. You're going to run this back over uh, from here and that's going to go to the input, the other, the unused input on your AND switch. And so it's simply just branch out through the HBHF sensor and back to this, back to this uh, AND switch. And that's all you have to do per floor. So the next floor up there and then each one of these, sorry, I should say is set to nine because that's going to account for the power you need to power this branch, um, the power you need to pass through that that uh, HBHF sensor, and then it itself is gonna power the AND switch and the power you need to pass through this OR switch. So nine per floor out the, out the main branch. This branch stays in its default, and you do that for every floor you want this to work on. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the, the, the next one way up there. And so from this next branch, uh, now some of you might have noticed that well, you don't have to use branch after branch after branch. And that's true. You could use, say, a, a splitter if because it'll be since it's nine each time, you could use a splitter and send 19 to it. So you get 18, nine out of each one. You can do that. I'm just doing this branch method um, because I think it's easier to digest when you're learning this. So we'll just do this whole one in, let's do this one in, I guess, blue. So I'm gonna run just like I did before. I'm gonna run out from the branch and into this branch here. This will be set to nine. This stays in its default configuration. The entire, everything we do now is the same uh, as it was in the other one. We're gonna run the power out to one side of the AND switch. And then we're gonna run the, the branch out is gonna run way up to, I'm gonna just jump over here. And I'm just gonna go up, try and keep this nice. We'll just jump up here to here. And then we'll go over and in. We're just running this through. We're running this through the HBHF sensor just like we just did before. So we'll just kind of come around here, run that out back to here. And it's not very straight, but that's okay. And run this back down the same way we followed this. We'll just jumper this down into here and over and up into there. Just like we did there, we did the exact same thing. We're just looping that through the HBHF sensor. You're gonna wanna make sure that that's, right now the default is they say exclude auth and exclude others. If you just tap it until it says exclude authorized, it'll set it to where you need it uh, like that. And then what we're gonna do now is now that we have 
these two things set up, we're going to run the output of this AND switch to one of the inputs on the OR switch, the output of this AND switch to the other input of that OR switch. And then the main output here is going to run up to the battery, or to the battery, excuse me, to the elevator power in, uh, like so. Just like I did before, I'm just gonna run this over somewhere above the motor, drop it down, there we go. And with that nine volts set from each of these, that gives you all the power you need and everything is ready. So now if I, I'm being detected by this, probably both really at this point, but the elevator will block that top one when it's up there. So you do have to have both. So there you go. At this point, everything's ready. If I want to use the elevator, I can. I'll just go up, I'll just jump out real quick. It's gonna go all the way to the top. Now, if I put my admin vanish mod on so that the game can't see me, you'll notice that I'm no longer detected, which means that this, only half of the AND switches are, are going through, which isn't enough for an AND switch. You have to have both. So now I have no power to the elevator because I've, I've cut power by simulating myself as a raider. So if I try and use this, it's not gonna work. If I make myself visible again, like so, I'm now visible, the elevator turns back on because I am detected. I can call this down and use it as I as I see fit. So if I was, let's say I was on the top floor, I'm gonna be detected by this one, still allows me to use it just like so. Now I can also simulate this by just deauthorizing myself. So now I'm not being detected because they're ignoring me because it said include, include, you know, the others. And so now again, I have no power, nothing's gonna work because I'm not authorized. As soon as I'm authorized, there you go. The elevator kicks on because it's, I'm being detected by this bottom one. And you can see which one's detecting me because the AND switch lights up. Now they're both detecting me. The point is, it doesn't matter where you are and it doesn't matter if you have someone upstairs or downstairs. You know, the only limitation and, and the reason I put these inside here is that it, this way, like watch, I'll grab what I'll grab. Well, I'll grab three doors since that middle one has a frame. If I put a door here, we'll pretend that this one is a wall. And this one, oh, it looks like this button's in the way. Yeah, this one is there. Uh, now, as you see, none of these are being detected because the door is blocking that HBHF sensor. I have to open the door to be detected in order for my for this to turn on. You would want to put this stuff here, you know, in a in a secure place so that I mean, whatever. But even if raiders destroy this HBHF sensor, it's not going to matter because uh, then they won't get half of that ant switch requirement with it destroyed. So it is the safest way. Like if I, you know, when you do this, I'll close myself off again. So I'm deauthorized this, you no longer have the, uh, the ability to use this, which circumvents that problem of, you know, you don't want to put security on the button input side here. You never want to try and secure this because uh, the, in, the inner control uh, box here supersedes this. So if you put controls on this and you protect that, anyone can use this. So the best way to do this is really to just have a control on the elevator's power itself. And that's why we've done it this way so that these things see you when you come in. As long as those doors are kept closed, you can't accidentally have the power on and someone be waiting to authorize it. The point is this is probably the simplest and easiest way after putting a switch. Uh, so that folks is about all I've got. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below. Otherwise you can get me on my discord. See you later.